If you've been following competitive Melee lately, then you've surely heard about Goomwave controllers. Several top names in the Melee community have made content about Goomwaves, and the response to them appears to be generally positive. However, as someone who's done plenty of theorycrafting when it comes to controller legality, I want to shed some light into why the community should not blindly allow the Goomwave to become the new standard. This controller has, in fact, already begun to cause problems within the community, and will continue to do so if the community doesn't implement the proper workarounds. The main issue with the Goomwave is that it increases barrier of entry. The Goomwave is a GameCube controller with a modified motherboard which contains several special features. This is reminiscent of when I advised the community to install Arduino microchips in their controllers in 2017. At first, I overlooked the fact that Arduinos caused all sorts of logistical issues, but surely enough, I would end up recalling the Arduino within two weeks after realizing that we were better off using a modified memory card. I believe that history is now repeating itself with the Goomwave. The slide you're looking at lists all of the Goomwave's functionality. This video will focus on one aspect of the Goomwave in particular, which is the ability to remap your buttons. Being able to remap your buttons is by far the most powerful mod on the Goomwave, and as it stands, I believe that you have to buy a Goomwave just to get this mod alone. The interesting thing though is that remapping is also a mod that should undoubtedly be legal, since it falls under quality of life. The reason you need to be able to remap the GameCube controller's buttons is because the controller suffers from a fatal design flaw. The flaw has to do with the fact that in Melee, nearly every action stems from the jump button. Wave dashes, JC grabs, jump specials, and aerials all stem from jump. However, the GameCube controller doesn't accommodate all of these actions well. On the GameCube controller, wave dashes and JC grabs are fine since they can be performed with two fingers, but jump specials such as JC shines are where the GameCube controller begins to run into problems. Melee players perform JC shines by sliding their thumb from Y to B because there's no other choice, when in actuality, this is an abrasive motion. Ideally, JC shines would be performed with two different fingers, however, it's still feasible to perform them through the use of the slide method. The real problem with the GameCube controller is its inability to perform shuffled aerials well. This is because the slide method doesn't work nearly as well for things like Y to A since it makes it difficult to short hop. Furthermore, reaching the C stick shortly after jumping is outright impossible. Many melee players use a claw grip to compensate for these shortcomings, but what the need to claw indicates is that the GameCube controller is flawed. Fortunately, the GameCube controller can be fixed through the use of a software mod. The way to fix the GameCube controller is to turn L, R, or Z into one of its jump buttons. As I said earlier, I consider this mod so necessary that I'd buy a Goomwave just for it alone. I'm not sure which of the three buttons I listed is best, but I'm positive that either of them is better than X or Y since they all solve the issue with shuffles. Believe it or not, I think that every GameCube controller user should take the time to relearn the game with either L, R, or Z as their primary jump button. That brings me to what I believe needs to happen. In my opinion, the Melee community should implement the ability to remap these buttons at the character select screen through a standardized memory card mod. The way this would work is you would hold X or Y in conjunction with L, R, or Z for 3 seconds. Your controller would then be sent rumble feedback to let you know that the swap has occurred. The swap would then last until your controller is unplugged. Aside from the software aspect of this mod, there's also a hardware aspect worth mentioning. After designating L, R, or Z as your jump button, you'll surely want to hardware mod that button in order to make it more responsive. L or R should have its spring removed, which can be done at home through the use of a tri-wing. On the other hand, if you end up using Z, then tactile Z is highly recommended. This is a mod that most notable modders in the scene can perform for a low price. The software mod I've covered in this video may seem basic, but its implications are massive. Turning a shoulder button into a jump button will allow GameCube controller users to perform frame-perfect shuffles for the very first time. I provided a link to a video I made last year which explains why being able to shuffle frame perfectly is particularly important. Other than that, I may or may not make more videos discussing the Goomwave, but I felt the need to point out that remapping should be standardized, as the GameCube controller's layout was a huge issue for me back when I used one. This mod in itself has the potential to save the Melee community hundreds of thousands of dollars by eliminating the need to purchase a new motherboard. The video you just watched was the third in a four-part series on software mods and rule set changes that I'm in favor of. The final video within this series will air on Friday, October 8th. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of Melee content.